Good morning, Mayberry. Due to aggressive request, I started this podcast now. I'm not ready. I want a different intro song. I want spoof ads. I want an editor. I want a budget to pay a little production staff. But I have shit to say right now, and I can't keep ignoring the loving spiritual warriors who've asked me to just start like we were all born with nothing but my body and the basics. So here we go. We aren't going to talk about the rebranding and conflation of slavery, fallout, general racism, and class war. We aren't going to talk about PETA activists de-anthropomorphizing black people to make their points right now. We don't have time. We're going to talk about whatever I edit in next. Because I'm the producer, I'm the host, and I made this music. I'm Shift Orion, and I'm not waiting on Superman. Recap what's occurring this evening. So, uh, so I, I was just saying, I always knew... Trump was going to get COVID. I wasn't really anxiously waiting for it. I just in the back of my mind, like I've had this thought kind of recur. I was like, I wonder when that's going to happen to him. And, um, I'm just, I'm just like, what, how, how is it happening directly? Like right after the first debate of all times. And just before, uh, He's got he's got a good a good little there's a good amount of time for this scene to play out before election night. Right. And so Just, my my theory is that I mean my, my one of my many theories I've got a few uh, already um, uh, is that he he could use this as a solid exit without losing face. Because he just made all this bluster and and pomp, all this silly behavior at the debate, and looked very strong, and he had tweeted all about it, and he's got a, just, all of his people are just jerked off his ego one last time, like sure thing. And now this is a great storyline for a, a a kayfabe. I don't know if I'm saying that word right, but <laughs> this this political pro wrestling. <laughs> per- performance that we've all been fucking watching for a few years. Um, it's always been a, a political, like a pro wrestling performance, but he, I don't think that, I don't think that, I don't think that all, all the players really anticipated how real everything was about to get. I don't think that anybody who was living that life where they had a fourth wall that could fall down, I don't think they were ready. Well, him least of all. Oh, I mean, yeah. we 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 all we all watched him deteriorate in public. We all saw it kind of. Uh, we all saw that one one uh, instance of him uh, that circulated that he uh, he didn't he the pre- presidency was harder than he thought it was going to be. Yes, like he said that. <laughs> yes, we've witnessed in real time him fall apart, realize this is too much, and decide that he's going to golf with a good chunk of his time. And that he's going to watch TV with another good chunk of his time. And he's going to talk boldly and openly about that and watch uh, liberal um, talking heads go bananas and literally burst into tears every time the topic comes up. Um, I don't know. It's, it's been very frustrating to me as a, as a queer leftist radical to have in my mind just have so many times lately where I'm like, these fucking crying liberals, like all the time, like I can't. The liberals are crying again, like, uh, and it's, it's crocodile goddamn tears, y'all. Like, you don't know, maybe, um, they don't know, maybe, but it's fucking crocodile tears. Um, I also, I, my first thought when I heard was like, were the debates with Biden in person? Right, um, right. <clears throat> and, and that's a fun, that's a fun. Like, what kind of, what kind of cloud do you think Trump's fat fucking mouth has, or excuse me, but. No, that's um, great. That's what. But pass away. Think about it. Uh, he's, you know, ah, ah. I, I. It's just very. It is very interesting timing. The amount of time they have left to perform a, a scene, several. They they got they could fit 
six, seven scenes in between now October first and November third. It We've is got the, it is like just over a month. It's like the build up to a finale. Absolutely, there's it's like, so climax. At, at least so there's, just, there's a couple. There's a couple episodes left in the season. You can tell, like uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> the mood is. Yeah. No, we're like the episode before. Yeah, we're yeah. like we're like the episode before, like the you know the two finale, like how they like right. rev oh, it up and then they really be a yeah. two part finale. Yep, yeah, that that vibe. Um, we've got many things coming for October. That's what I know. Uh, I mean, but this was like boom. October 1st, October 2nd, like, just right off the bat. Oh, my God. I'm just losing time to stress. Oh, easily. Yeah. So I just, I'm, I knew for most of this week what day it was. Uh, last week, I had no idea what day it was a good chunk of the time. That's, I had to look at my phone constantly to be like, am I, <laughs> do I have somewhere to be? Do I have something to do? Um, fuck. Yeah. I don't I don't know what I don't know what uh I don't know what to say about I think it's a good time to sit back and watch what happens. I it's so funny cuz earlier today I decided I am off I'm grounded off of yeah. Instagram. I decided and then you terrible decided terrible place. Terrible yeah, place. It's an awful place. I why am I over at Zuckerberg's fucking cyber <laughs> hell house? When I his know, little side bitch. <laughs> oh man, fuck that shit. Yeah, his little side bitch. It's his, it's house. his little. It's his like. Yeah, it's his like his dumpster thing. He's like this. This isn't gonna fly on my, on my baby. Yeah, but no, he's whatever. Like, yeah, no, but he's even still like micromanaging, and he's making it very clear that he prefers like you know a certain type of person to a certain bunch of other types of people who disagree with everything that like. Is fucking happening? All this vile shit that's just allowed right now. I've reported multiple people that have been, um, oh, I don't know, like openly calling for like just death in the streets with no real criteria around that, which I, I'm fairly certain is the kind of thing that has led to mass shootings and different events in the past. So I'm not, I'm not clear on why they want to continue giving platform to those people, but I can't, uh, I can't call. A, you know, crying fucking stupid liberal or crying fucking stupid liberal when they're trying to tokenize me actively and I'm telling them that I won't be tokenized and they're not understanding what I'm saying. Like I'm not speaking in English. Like they can't slow down and recognize like maybe I'm not who I think I am. Huh. Maybe I'm not maybe I'm not doing what it, maybe the impact and the intention are not aligned and I need to examine myself because I'm being told something oh, by somebody. Could I possibly be yeah no no they stay questioning yourself like like could you possibly be more impactful than you think you are in ways that you don't think you are like i don't know have you ever met someone who did that to you like why if if your answer is yes why are you above that too that's that's the damnedest thing well earlier today i was describing it like um it's like liberals to me are like like fucking crusty ass nasty fucking dudes cat calling at some girl that's just minding her own business walking down the goddamn street and then get aggressive when they get anything of a response short of them immediately getting their dick sucked which is the it's just never made sense to me i've never been like i just don't get that um especially with people that you don't know at all you know, right. these are people, <laughs> but a couple of them, one of them that's really got me hot today, we go way back, but we haven't been tight in a long time. Like we haven't even talked in a long time. Mm. And so she, she doesn't even know I'm, I'm particularly touchy about the word friend. And in this kind of context, the word friend has been used against me as a weapon more often than I care to even count. Uh, where somebody is wanting me to to be nicer or be more polite about something that is a charged grief based issue to me that they don't understand the gravity of and they think we're just kind of able to have friendly scripted conversations about these types of things and I'm like no this is actually my real life 
And then they don't understand, they don't get it, and then we end up getting into it. To summarize a host of long, explosive conversations, some of them I've really put in a lot of time to get people here and where I'm at, and they just don't. Um, And frankly, that is something that only comes out of really liberals. Like, for the most part, if I really have the opportunity and time to open up to somebody who's, like, conservative and really, like, anti-queer or, like... So, like low key rate if they're not like committed to a cause of white supremacy if they're not like sworn into some bullshit where they've got like rhetoric and indoctrination I really have like had a lot more movement and opened up space and relationship bridge building that's genuinely brought me actual safety in my lived experience my real life to a shocking degree It's such a higher degree than with liberals liberals will use all the right rhetoric to kind of entrap me into relationships where they then drop the ball, drop me, or, like, knock the floor out from under me on purpose, or they just be like, I'm taking your housing situation and leaving, (laughs) taking my ball and going home, but, like, with your home, um, so, anyway. No, I completely, I can, I can totally see it, like, the, I don't know, even as a kid, like, some of the, like, when I was just peripherally aware that, like, there were two kinds of adults, like, right. people who liked our president and people who didn't. Right. And, um, and like, uh, you know, you're a, you, you, when you become aware of, like, oh, my, this, my friend's parents think differently mm. than my parents. Um, and then you go to their house and they're great people and, and, yeah. and, and they take care of you and they love you. Mm-hmm. Um that's we, we they were i i feel encouraged to forget those times mm you know what's the damnedest thing i never had that really so when i was in kindergarten i remember having this moment where i had to come to my parents and ask them if i was allowed to be friends with people who weren't christians and like thought that i wasn't like and they were like they realized that they'd gotten wires crossed. Like, something about the way they conveyed everything got twisted in my mind because they were like, uh, of course you're allowed to... What? Like, um... Yikes. Yeah. Uh, they were culty, but they were evangelistic. And so there was, like, a friendly component to things that was expected, and, like, they missed a mark somewhere by the time I was five or six or whatever that, that expressed itself. But besides that, um... I get. I can't say I never had that, but uh, I never had an awareness of people. Like I, I'm pretty sure they kept the circle to like Republican minded people. I think they. I think they were like mostly into having me hang out with people that they knew and liked. Um, and we did th- like there were things like community centers or whatever community groups. I don't think that they. I don't think that they allowed them, that kind of shit because they would get in hot conversations every time politics would come up. They would like end those relationships. And then the one time I had a friend that they weren't friends with the parents that I remember, he was kind of a bad kid. And by bad, I mean like, he was like, let's go watch the R-rated movies because we're at my dad's house and that's allowed here, but not at my mom's house. And I was like, that's a thing? I didn't know. And so, it was, you know, I was like exposed to the notion of like manipulating your parents when you have enough distance between them, like for the first time, um, which is not the, it's not bad, bad, you know, bad's relative, uh, you know, bad, like the bad baby and the elephant is, is what it is. Um, he showed me this tape that had like, clips of horror movies and then we watched all of Beetlejuice which was like on the line of shit I wasn't allowed to watch and then The Shining that was the way it was like the scene with like blood rushing out of an elevator or whatever I was just like mesmerized like I'd never seen anything like it in my entire fucking life Um, and his dad had this whole wall of movies that were all horror movies, so we looked at covers of shit that got me all fucked up in the head, and I had nightmares for a while. So then, he mailed me this package one time, he was, like, at his mom's job, bored his shit, and put together this manila envelope of stuff that had, like, a squeaky, uh, like, rubber dolphin, and, um, two, like, pictures that I really wish I still had that were these really nice... They were, like, autographed images of Freddy Krueger and fucking 
what's her name, Ra- Reagan from The Exorcist, Linda Blair and Robert Anglin, like, in costume. Um, but they were, like, really nice images, but I was in, like, first or second oh, grade. Oh, man, that sounds awesome. It, it was great, but, like, I got that shit, I showed it to my mom, and she was like, oh, hell no. Oh, like, she flipped God. the fuck out. And then she got on the phone with this kid's mom, had this whole mm. conversation about, like, they're not allowed to hang out anymore, they can't tell your kid to stay away from my kid kind of stuff. Like, it wasn't it wasn't those words exactly, but it was fucking over. Um, it was done. And, yeah, that, that broke my heart. And then I ran into that kid again years later. They pulled me out of school, like, the next year for homeschooling. And then I ran into him when I convinced them to let me go back for half of my sophomore semester. And he was like, he didn't remember me at all, first of all. For real? And, oh, yeah, he was, like, super stony and, like, had burned his brain out on whatever oh, fucking shit. drug he was into. Yeah, I don't know what that's he was the, into. That's the crazy thing about those childhood relationships is just, like, sometimes you see them and it's been, like, 5, 10, 15 years. And mm-hmm. then it's, like, I've still technically known you that long, but I don't know who, the, who I'm looking at right now. Yeah, yeah, it's a wild thing. Well, and that's the thing with that's the thing with that one relationship with that one person where it's like we knew each other a long time ago. It wasn't that long ago, but it was a certainly I was still a kid. I was a, I was an adult. So I was right on the line. I turned 17 mm. I, or I turned 18, I think, right after I met her. Um, and we hung out probably till I was around 23. So I was like a kid kid. Like, yeah. I hadn't even been I'd been homeless. uh for a like a couple of stints right around when I was eighteen, but I hadn't been like homeless, homeless yet. Like I hadn't been like, oh shit, this is my twenties. Like this is like all of my most of my fucking adult life uh, at this point. So um, yeah, she doesn't know me now, and we've been following each other on social media. But that's not something I would call a friendship. I'm real picky about that word. And then back to the, before I fucking forget again, um, the other two people, one of them knows me because she's watched me perform and I don't know who the fuck she thinks she's talking to coming. Cause I feel like I've been pretty clear that I can't deal with this, this blue ticket because someone died and Harris couldn't handle doing a job, making sure that a white supremacist murderer was dealt with. It's bullshit, like, and dragging the name of a, of a black teenager for no fucking reason. Trying to. Trying to. D- t- d- multiple black teenagers, because the other kids didn't deserve that either. But the one that I knew and was close to, uh, there's just no getting over it for me. And I've been pretty clear about this is not about politics for me. So I don't know why this particular person who's been following me all this time and has had... To, I don't have any reason to engage with answering questions about, you know, I'm just not getting it. I'm not getting involved in any scripted political conversations on this topic. It's just not possible. Like, it just, I can't access that. I never really could anyway. I've never understood it. So, yeah, then the other one doesn't know me at all, but he watches my story every damn day. He watches my story before anybody else a lot of the time. And, like, has been such a little hater. But he also likes posts and likes things. And he's co- he's coming to my DMs. Dude, yeah, he's interested. He, I don't know, man. Like, he can stay interested over fucking there. I don't know what he's <laughs> about. I, And the thing is, too, is I don't block people. Um, but he came on to one of my posts today talking about... He telling the, the other, one of the other people to block me. Just block him. He's pathetic. Little snowflake. Oh, blo- really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's reasons I was crazy this afternoon. There's reasons. This little shit. Um, yeah, this little college kid that just, like, shit talks me at random when he feels like it about when he feels I've said something stupid was the first... That was the last time. I didn't engage with him after the first one because was, that was it. But I got, I got nothing to say. Like, I got nothing to fucking say. I've been clear. This is not normal for me like people trying to engage with me on these normal types of i had one person i had i cut off a while ago but as soon as i told her about why i I won't even listen to i can't look at listen to i won't even think about harris it's insane that that 
that that motherfucker was ta- that that name disappeared from the scene. Resurrecting it at the time that they did was an act of violence, and it's ridiculous that anybody decided to give it any attention or energy. It's crazy that people didn't just leave, shun them, then boycott, demand demand something else, demand something different. Public calls for that shit would have mattered, and nobody nobody was going there. Um, but I've made it clear, and so as soon as I told her why, like I gave her details and told her what the whole story was, and she started just saying the most like weird short stuff as soon as as soon as Harris came back uh cuz I had told her about it right before like a week before maybe and then uh Harris comes back and she starts tagging me in posts about cuz the post office was what everybody was thinking about that week tagging me in posts about the post office and how important the post office is just tagging me with no comment mm-hmm. like the I don't fucking know. I don't know. I I mean, and that's that's the offensive jump that you find them making is is that oh you aren't sucking this big blue dick. Yeah. Yeah. You must hate the post office. Right. Yes. You must yes. wear a MAGA hat. Yes. <laughs> well, and that's I immediately started saying when people question me enough times, I was like, I'm just gonna get a MAGA hat. I'm gonna start. I, right. It's hat. like if this is yeah, this is how you want me to dress. Like yeah. you're you're cost, you're costuming me, right? Like yeah, you put you drew the line where you drew the line. I, I was will, just standing where I told you I was standing. And you were like, well, I'm drawing the line right here, and it happened so. to be behind you. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I might as well wear the hat. Like, uh, I will. I will bill anyone who wants uh, to send us hats. Oh yeah, um, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh fuck, man. Um, yeah, no, and I really. It's a funny thing because I, I, I legit. Um, I don't hate conservatives that much. Like I'm concerned about them. I wish that they um, would stop like shooting themselves and everybody else in the foot and the knee and the chest and the head all the time. <laughs> um, uh, like, it'd be cool. I also uh, think that there's probably a bunch of them that are, like, like conservatives and at large. I think there's a lot of conservatives um, that would rather be talking to me and dealing with me than be dealing with the type of people that want to openly and actively harm me that also brand under their fucking bullshit. And so I'm looking for like progressives that are stuck in suburbia with like liberals all around them, driving them bananas and making them question their own morals when all these liberals have no integrity and no backbone. And I'm looking for the conservatives that like give a shit that I give a shit, you know, like that's, and that I really care about like this planet and like what we're doing here and like the people in it. Um, cause I know that there are a bunch that are like that and not all of them are into this, like, uh, like, I don't know, revelations lore, like, uh, LARPing, um, <laughs> revelations LARPing that's happening. Yeah. That's the one. Uh, yeah. Apocalypse fetishists, if you will. Um, not all Christians are boogaloo boys, I guess, is what not all conservatives are boogaloo boys. I propose that we refer to ourselves as the rationals, because it's not left or right, and I don't think, I think the whole thing really is, uh, not to be national about anything, not even nationalistic about anything, like, that's a, that's a touchy one with conservatives, but, like, I think there's still a conversation to be had, even if they disagree with certain parts of what I'm saying, I don't know. Um, but one thing I do know for sure, Mitt Romney, um, he didn't vote to impeach for, for any purpose besides to get on Biden's cabinet. Um, They do have that kind of forethought. Absolutely. Of course. Yeah. Of course. It wasn't that long ago. And, And Harris was introduced to the, to the political pro wrestling game. Like she was where her name was really like inserted in the Kavanaugh trials. I was like, no, when I saw her up there, no, get that bitch's face out of here. Don't put her there. No, that's what's going to make everybody fall in love with her. And then everybody fell in love with her. No. Um, but yeah, they, they put her there and then I, you know, I could write, it'd be cool. I should write the script. I could write, I could write it like a script, like the, the, you know, be like a, um, 
but, but it's nonfiction, you know, but I'll write it in a script format. I guess yeah, the history yeah, yeah. of yeah, the politi- the political kayfabe. Um, yeah. These fucking dicks. It's super boring. It's like not even a good story. It's not compelling. Like, I'm like, who's getting paid? It's repetitive. It's, yeah. Like, they really even did, like, Harris, Harris having an organic disappearance and then coming back, like, you know, can you smell what the rock is cooking or whatever the fuck? Like, I don't know. That's, I'm trying to think it. Oh. <laughs> Jesse Ventura came and went every time. I was like, who else? Uh, with um, a chair, with a chair in hand. Yeah, Steve Austin. Um, Kamala Harris with a chair. Fuck. It's just boring. Like it's not. It's so unoriginal, and it's working because it's unoriginal, and because human brains are designed to just lap up. The same old, same old. Well, it's it's how probably the bulk of adults feel like they're getting a handle on being an adult. Because they can understand this fiction. It's like the Olympics, you know? It's every four years. It is like the Olympics. It it, It reminds me so much of the Olympics. It's every four years. We uh, don't give a shit about these people (laughs) until... Until uh, they're told to. Until the fucking stadium is yeah. is open. Like right. right. Yeah. Yeah, but then they get to go on Wheaties boxes and be in magazines and on the view and shit forever after. <laughs> uh and they stay there. I don't know. I really am kinda hoping for a little trickle down effect. Uh with this um, COVID infection, I'm hoping that um, uh, that that room acts as a vector. And, um, yep, that's all I know. I don't know. Because they were both not wearing masks. That the whole tree gets sick? Yeah, I really... I and just, every fucking branch? <laughs> yeah, no, because I don't... I don't... I really, like, I have a lot of hostility for liberals. And, like, when I tell you Kamala Harris... Like any loathsome thing that ever happens to her. The same with J.K. Rowling. I am here for those headlines. I am here for those headlines. Oh yeah, I'm just sitting in my. House. I'm not even out fucking up anything. I didn't go out to a single guy. Actually, I li- I lied for a second. I went to one BLM little rally in a tiny little town by uh, middle-class white people in sandals with socks. So, like, with very nice signs. Um, I've not been anywhere fucking shit up, and um, I don't intend on going anywhere fucking shit up. I'm very busy with my life uh, doing things and being responsible and shit, so I just have to sit and hope that uh, things like fucking Harris getting COVID could happen. Um feel like legal legal's gonna allow that when I when I show it to when I show it to legal they're gonna be like yeah that's that's a lot yeah. and not fucking out of the question at this point no you know uh, it, you know uh, it it could be November 1st or November 2nd sorry like <laughs> it could be you know like I, this be. shit tends to be kind of just like what's well, October have to bring you don't have to wait for it it's you the, in the first couple days it's like this is the thing now yeah, yeah, no, the hope would be, the hope would be that it takes very quick, that the vectoring doesn't have to jump to multiple people before it takes her, but <laughs> it's, it's fine if it's somebody gets sloppy in a couple of weeks and we gotta wait. Anyway, I think anything could fucking happen at this point. I'm, I, <laughs> I was just getting into it today, was it today? Yeah, it was today, about, um... Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, like, dramatically changing the subject. I read something, I don't remember if it was a post or an article, but it's a theory, it's a theme, I've seen other things about it, that, uh, gravity is fake, and that we are held onto the Earth by electricity. Um, and I believe this is a, uh, if not a, if not a child theory, a cousin theory of Flat Earth, um, and I am living for it. I love it. It's so much fun. <laughs> like, it's just, uh, yeah, I'm digging it. 
Yeah. It's the, it's the entertainment value is, is there if you can get over the fucking... Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, you've got to remember, I literally was raised by people that were like, dinosaur bones were put in the earth um, by Satan yeah, right? to trick right? humans into doubting God. The mental gymnastics. These people... They raised me all the way through. We never had CPS in our house. Do you understand what I'm saying? Nobody's wow. watching so many people while they're living their lives like this. So I'm just whatever. You know, yeah. at this point, I'm like, does it actually matter what's real more than what people think is real? And then from there, my question is, what does that mean? Right? Like... What does that mean practically, applicably? Because I don't think it matters. The only if I were to come up with a, I've decided I believe in it. That like I came out of this nonsense, and so I need to find the right thing to believe in, and I need to fully commit to that shit. Because you know, science has failed me my entire fucking life, and I just don't. It just doesn't occupy that much uh, space in my my trust uh, fucking zones in my mind. Like there's just no like real anchor there i mean um, well not the 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 whole point of the field is that it's constantly growing but that sometimes means like doing a complete 180 on some shit that was totally. thought to be That's the thing. That's like the thing. like fucking trustworthy yeah, so unlike <laughs> unlike things like um you know a carbon dating which i don't t when you start telling me you know something happened between some million years and whatever million years, or, like, even thousands of years. Like, I'm going to start questioning the exactness of that. And unless I have the attention span to learn all of the details, I don't give a shit. <laughs> and that pisses people off that understand it easily. But I didn't learn that shit. I didn't get the steps at the right age, and right. I don't fucking care. It's not affecting anybody that no, one right no. and if I wanted to give a shit about flat earth or like be, you know if I wanted, that's the one I want to commit to or what if I wanted to that's the fun I'm having with it like that's where I'm like I don't give a shit like flat earthers just they mesmerize me um, they remind me, it's like Area 51 people, but is where I start getting worried is that I think people give too much attention and concern to flat earthers the ones people needed to worry about the cult people needed to worry about had the number two radio show in the in the U.S. for like fucking, uh, I think it was over ten years. The focus on the family was this right under like Rush Limbaugh and shit. Like that's the cult people needed to be worried about, but nobody was really wanting to address that in any way that wasn't satirical and kind of being like, oh, they're always going to be opposed to us. But what was really happening is those people were being fed propaganda, really by one or two people at a time like it wasn't like a huge amount of folks all thought this crazy shit all at once they were galvanized by the energy of somebody that was like let me feed this to them and veil it in weird ways it's like a look over here thing like the harmless stuff is where people want to get really ag aggressive and alienating in ways i don't really understand like it's bizarre like i'm just kind of i'll listen to them talk like the flat earthers i'll just listen to them talk like, i just will listen to them talk i might crack a smile, but I'll crack a smile about a number of things, and I'll openly and condescendingly l laugh hysterically at the beliefs of liberals, so that, you know, I do I do have limits <laughs> as, far as, the, as far as the mythologies that I'm willing to allow my neighbors to just believe in and talk to me like they're real. I have limits. Um, but yeah, I'll talk to people who have uh, different religious beliefs than me, and 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 I don't have a commitment to my own to such a degree that I that I need to be like they're wrong, so that our conversations just kind of go further. I get to explore more. Yeah, of the human. absolutely. Way to be like why the why the if if you are super passionate about um, your avenue of faith. Mm -hmm. um, and you know someone else to be just as or more passionate than you are about yours, about their own, mm. why wouldn't you want to, like, see what they're ta doing? Like, yeah. like, like, if, because if you, if you've got all this energy for it, then, like, how, yeah. how is, it's, you know, it's like loving ice cream and then discovering there's more than one flavor, like. Yeah, and some flavors you're not going to like, 
But, like, I literally think my only flavor I don't like, don't like, is mint chocolate chip. I think there's just the way, in all the flavors I've tried, there's some that I'm like, mm, meh. Mint chocolate chip's the only one that I'm like, I wish I could un <laughs> this bite. <laughs> like, get this away from me. I can smell it from across the room. Um, so, yeah, that's... Uh, that's how that one went. And I feel like that's that's mostly the case with a lot of things. There's not a whole lot that I'm like, there's only the one. There can only be the one. Well, and, and when you and when you are prepared to be flexible about it, then what I think can be guiding more like a, a more persuasive thing is not the rhetoric or concepts you discover, but the people that mm -hmm. you find. Mm -hmm. And, um, so like if you're if you're ready but unsure like sometimes that's a good compass is like knowing that you found good people it's a thing yeah it's strange to me that so many people who have uh, like the the folks who are like at each other's throats so like, i hate i hate liberals i hate conservatives those people the conservatives and liberals that hate each other uh, they got a lot more in common than, like, I do with either one of them. And I'm sitting here just like, I'm, I would get along with liberals more if they weren't so fucking, like, actively d dangerous to me. Like, they are really dangerous to me. And they want, so the problem is, I was discussing there's conservatives that are not vile. The ones that are violent and want to be violent against people like myself, liberals agitate, they get them instigated. And then they they aren't even the target. They don't have to hide behind me. They aren't even the target of the shit. Yeah, I think a lot of people it's way too hard for them to understand like why why liberals might be harmful to you. It's weird. It's yeah. It's strange because it's uh, it's so like just so like good versus evil type uh, lens that they're looking through their life. They want it to be simple math in a world of nuance. Is that because of, like, Steven Spielberg movies? Is that because we had, like, the protagonist, antagonist, that fucking... I think things took a turn with the lightsaber. The lightsaber. Red versus blue. Oh, son of a bitch. Very fucking consistently. Fucking George Lucas. I can't I stand know, that, that motherfucker. That fucking asshole, God dude. God damn it, George <laughs> Lucas. I got stories about George Lucas. Multiple. That's... Oh, man. That's... That's now, if you correct. want, if you if you want, you can. I mean, the introduction of the green lightsaber was what ended the, the trilogy. Um, that's what I. Do, oh shit, we're gonna have to do a whole discussion on this. Yeah, yeah. Return of the Jedi, black outfit, green lightsaber. I don't think the green lightsaber's come into the picture yet. Oh. Or if it has, if it has, it's still Yoda doing the swamp training, you know, over, over on Dagobah. Interesting, fascinating. All right. So Star Wars is here going on the it, list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Here for it, I am. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. For for my other podcast, we're gonna watch movies and shows and music and things. Um, listen to music. Because, yeah, everything is revolution fuel if you make it revolution fuel. The revolution will be televised if you're doing the revolution while you're doing TV at the same time. I, nobody, anybody get, can't nobody <laughs> tell me nothing. That's nothing. Not a single nobody. Why the fuck not? We can, we can maybe dismantle the master's house with the master's tools. Because they are in a glass-ass house now. And they've got a lot of rocks in here and shit. They had me carrying myself. Lugged in that shit with a wheelbarrow. Carried this one with my fucking bloody ass hands. I got a lot of rocks in their glass house that I can just throw in any direction. And I think the whole thing will crash down if I if I can lift one enough. They they're too heavy for me to pick up right now, but they're not too heavy for me to pick up ever. You get the right help. Yeah, that's actually yeah. I build a catapult. Yeah. Get, you know, yeah. It doesn't even take a lot of people. It takes a few really smart people to engineer the. The uh, projectile device. It's true. <laughs> it's very true.
Yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I just, I'm, I'm so tired of this nonsense. I don't know why. I don't know why everybody's so excited about the idea of getting stressed out. Like people texted me, "Are you watching the debate?" So many. Di- mm-hmm. I, I think it was like four people, but it was all different people that I was like, "What are you talking about?" Like <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely not. I, actually, my response was, "Am I watching the what?" <laughs> Or if they said, are you watching the debate with, with Trump and Biden? I'd be like, am I watching the what with who and who? Like, that's... I, I told one person that she could give me recaps, and she took it as an opportunity to tell me that she was going to vote for Harris. I was like, that's not what I... That's like if I was like... <laughs> okay, so on that metaphor with the with the rapey liberal energy, um, if, if that's like if I was like, okay, we can neck a little bit, and then the next thing I know... I'm being like, like forcibly shoved onto the dick that I wasn't about to suck from the cat call that I said, fuck you to in the original metaphor with that shit. Fuck this shit. Like it's all the same. It's one rapey liberal dude standing there cat calling and expecting head all the goddamn time. I'm like, okay, liberal, we can neck a little bit. I'm like, Tell me I'm radical or they're fucking forcing my face down and get the hell up off of me. Get the hell up off on me. <laughs> Dude, they, they so they so badly want to be radical. It's <sighs> it's FOMO. It's this white they're like they're they have the fear of missing out on, you know, I hey, I want some justice too. Like <laughs> I, I, you yeah. know, like yeah. like that looks satisfying. Like uh-huh. are are some of you starting to feel better? Like yeah. it, let yeah, me let me okay. ha- let oh. me have some. <laughs> oh shit! Dang, what a way to oh man, what a breakdown. Let me have some. Yeah, no, yeah, that's it. Really, it's a oppression, oppression cosplay. Yes, oppression oh. larping. There's yes. the, there's yeah. the apocalypse larpers, the revelations larpers, and I've got the motherfucking oppression larpers. You know when when. Like trending things on Instagram are like uh, Karen's getting bitched out or 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 uh, flipped on and mm. um, you know it's just like a quick sixty seconds of some justice <laughs> of some kind like yeah actually uh, that is, you yeah, know they it, love like those. white people open that shit on Instagram they're oh, like oh no that how is can I how can I star in one of those like ah uh, yeah yeah that it yeah how can I st- how can I be the next viral little everybody's got their phones so they're ready for it yep that's why I appreciate people who really do the work like you right thank you uh, I appreciate you too brother yeah yeah this is a this is a neat little neat little podcast for people I've been asked multiple times this week what is it about like do you like the sound of my voice right now? Answer that question with a goddamn question. Dude. Um. <laughs> that's that's usually, like, I don't know, it's kind of like uh, your attraction to a book because it has a nice cover. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the sound, it's, you know, your voice is an instrument. You play it well. Like, it's just, it's, uh, it's easy listening. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, uh, another, it's like, at least I'm not Joe Rogan. That's oh my! Okay. He's just, yeah, just, not being screamed yeah. at. But I like, mean, you know, just, but totally though. Like that motherfucker's just yip yapping about whatever the fuck he feels he's like. So barking more. Like he's not a small dog. He's just like this yeah. weird, like loud muscle. I, mean, I, 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 I think yip yapping is. I'm gonna stick with that. Okay. You yeah, know, he's a big old fucking like thick neck. He's a bitch. He's scared and confused. He's yip yapping. He's he barks okay. like a, yeah. Right. He goes off like a chihuahua All actually. Right. That's another thing that white people are to blame for. Joe Rogan ever doing anything besides being the host of the Fear Factor. Fuck y'all. That's He's uh God. made quite a curve for himself. He really has. He's gone fucking far. I am I will say, um, I'm disappointed now that he didn't host the debates because <laughs> they were passing COVID around at the debates. And that no, I'm kidding. I don't want Joe Rogan to get COVID. That's not that's not cool. but but you know oh. the way they advertised that the debate was uh it looked like a a poster for a fight like they it just was... happened to be wearing suits but oh. uh, like especially like on TV like there's there's an announcer who sounds a little like Joe Rogan and there's fucking like 
like a weird transition and like you can almost hear the the bell ring and it's like oh, weird. The, they called it the first debate like just just I feel like I remember when they started getting really intense huh? with graphics and I felt I I felt like there was this moment where I was like they're doing too much with like with like the transitions and the color themes and the swipe effect and there's like a lot going on that my emotions are getting drawn into this to the point that I'm like with like epic music in the background yeah like, like it was like, so like, heavy hand it, I could see how maybe if they called people into a focus group and just gave them a clip of it and then asked them some questions if it was the wrong type of people they could get the feedback that would get them to put that on TV and expect it to work on everybody the same way but for me, it both gave me anxiety and an awareness that my head was being played with. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. Why, I why? I mean, it's just so. It's like the Olympics. <laughs> it is like it's all like the fucking Olympics. It's all like the goddamn. 